All right, the time has come for another Let's Build. I've done, I think, maybe a dozen of these so far, and they're quite intense and thorough, but that's the whole point. Like, it, my whole guide with these is to take, you know, an idea and build it with Ruby on Rails and kind of see it through. Obviously, it's not complete or fully polished, but you can get the idea of, as a general novice developer or even an advanced one of maybe a, an approach you could take to building an app. I did a... Four weeks ago already. Wow. Um, I did a poll just to see what I should build next. Um, I had some previous Let's Builds that I did that were like back with maybe Rails 5 or 4, which is old now. But Rails 7's out. We've got some new tech in the in the stack. And most of you said you wanted to see an event scheduling slash reservation app. So with that in mind, I kind of tweaked the original version of that. Uh, I think before it was just like booking time on a calendar and ch maybe charging for it. Um, and then this route, it's, I mean, it's a similar model. Now it's less visual. Um, there's no like calendar format or anything, but I did mimic what Calendly does. If you've heard Calendly, um, it's kind of just a widget you have where if you want to send a, a link to someone that you customize the link URL and it's like your direct link to, to setting up a meeting. So there's less back and forth between email it was unanimous that that was the next app we'd build. So I ended up doing that. And this one's pretty bare bones, nothing fancy. I have an account and on your account, you're going to have a booking link. If you see this UI right here, it's actually part of my kickoff tailwind template that comes, um, I guess it's just a template you can use a scaffold a rails app, but that's just my little preference of getting things started. And it makes it easier for these tutorials. So I will be using that in this tutorial and then I'll just be referencing it. So if you see this UI, that's why. Uh, so yeah, I added a booking link attribute to the user model. So that's already on the account for device. And then on that, you're able to go to the link um, directly, which you just saw. So it's Jay Smith here. And that's kind of the Calendly, I guess you could say UI you might be familiar with. It's nothing like exact, but it's just more or less a, a way to go to this page without... Um, doing too much work. And then you can also, of course, go into it like a new... Uh, window and be signed out and still refer to this. The whole goal here was to be able to book a, a booking. I call it bookings uh, without being logged in even. So there's a little uh, cruft with that and tr trying to like save data for a specific user kind of gets a little more challenging since you don't have access to a current user. Uh, but I did a little bit of work around with that and it seemed to work okay. It's it's obviously my own little interpretation, so it's nothing uh, amazing. Most probably pro developers would be like, what are you doing, man? But that's okay. I just wanted to take a stab at it and do it for the sake of learning, which is the whole point. So uh, with that in mind, I will go through this real quick and show you what it's all about. So we could just say also Jimmy Doe. This one in particular is a free booking. So the booking type I actually pass in a parameter in the URL. Um, if you want to get fancy with this, you could go back and require payment for one. So I added that as like a little bonus section of this guide. Uh, so we actually use Stripe elements and it should load on the page. Uh, it should, I think it's being blocked because of my browser. Let me do this again right here. There it goes. And uh, if we go in, you can add the Test card payment info, fix that. Jimmy Doe, Jimmy Doe example.com. You can't change your booking details. It's just kind of based on, you know, that UI. Um, and I didn't go fancy on date pickers because that's just, I mean, that's such a chore. So I, I would invite you to extend that. Maybe the Calendly has like actual buttons instead. So you, it's like predetermined. So that might be a better idea in terms of user ex experience. So now I can schedule the budget booking for 125, which is preset when you actually make the booking type on this end. So if you were to require, require payment, you could pass the price here should you want to. And that just creates one of these that you see here. So this is like in the admin area. And then this would be the public facing area. So we could schedule this. I feel like it's not going to work just because Stripe's uh, working in the background. It did work. Okay, cool. So, and then once that's done, since we don't have access to our current user, we want to have Stripe listen for webhooks and you don't want to just like create the meeting or booking without like confirming that they, 
you know, legit paid. So there's some behind the scenes stuff happening where I do allow the booking to get created, but it's in a different status. So I set a pending state and then depending on if the webhook fires um, and, you know, is con confirmed true or uh, working, this would set be set to approved automatically. So uh, I think if we say Stripe, listen uh, forward to local host 3000. Oh, I think I know why. Okay, so I have this wrong here. Should be webhooks. I'm listening for the root path, which is ridiculous. It should be at webhooks right now. We go with that. I'll try that one more. I knew something was different that was uh, obvious there. And we'll do this. Schedule the booking. Hopefully this gets... There we go. 204 is much better. And then get the charge succeeded. So one of these should be approved at that point. So once we do the webhook logic, that actually gets approved. So then we have these set of pending, not approved or unapproved. So if you were to unapprove it, say you didn't want that charge to come in, you could probably like set this and then I don't have it in the app, but if it did go to that state, you could refund the customer perhaps up to you what you want to do. So that's a walkthrough of seeing the UI. It's quite simple from the looks of it, but there's more to it under the hood that's kind of confusing in some cases. General idea is that we have booking types and then bookings, which are what the, the end user does. Um, so the booking types are the ones you set up, like maybe there's specific slots of what they are. Um, and then you set those up. And then if you want, you can charge, you know, for a specific one, depending on what it is. It doesn't matter which one it is. So we'll go over all that in this guide and kind of walk through all the stages of setting up Stripe as well for that extra payment layer. Um, I did basically did do one where the payment intent succeeded. Everything worked. Um, you might have a better event to listen for if things did work. Typically, you want to use webhooks as the background way to make sure a payment has succeeded and then you can set uh, whatever else up you want to for the particular user or whatever resource you're adding to your rails app i didn't do anything about processing or payment failed um, typically those could just be you know emails that go to the customer or whoever uh, just saying what happened and, and what what you could do about it so those are extra steps you could take from there. So the models are quite simple. We just have three, uh, the user booking and booking type, and then we go from there. So I'll kick things off with this, uh, just kind of creating a similar app using my template. Um, and then we'll, you know, kind of use that and go from there.